This week on the Computer Chronicles, how to find a job online. We'll show you hotjobs.com, one of the leading online recruiting sites, and guru.com, the place to go if you're a freelancer looking for an assignment. Some employers do all their recruiting online. We'll meet the head of e-recruiting for Cisco to find out why. And if you or your child is headed to college, we'll show you a unique recruiting website that could pay the bills. Finding a job online, coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by pc to pc the online computer migration service from PC First, moving files, applications, and preferences from your old computer to your new one. Additional support is provided by Upside Events, presenting the Digital Lifestyle Revolution Conference, where people and technology intersect. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee. Well, the news these days seems to be about layoffs and staff cutbacks, and for the first time in a while, looking for a job may be a more challenging task than it's been in the past. The good news is the Internet. It has become the premier place for finding a good job, and today we're going to show you how to use the web to match yourself up with the ideal employer. Here to help us get started is Scott Clark of HotJobs.com. How are you doing, Scott? Very good. Good morning. Uh, Scott, let me ask you, there are several big sort of job-finding websites out there. You're the guys who plunked a million bucks down for the Super Bowl ad this year. How do you guys position or distinguish yourselves? Are they all the same? Are they slightly different? Definitely a difference amongst the job sites. Um, you can talk about the quality and precision of the searches. Um, you can talk about the thousands of opportunities across all the different types of industries mm -hmm. that are out there. Uh, but I feel the major differentiating factor about HotJobs is twofold privacy and choice. All right, well, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Let, let's go get to the choice part first, I guess. Let's start from the basics. I'm out there looking for a job or a better job. I go to your, is this your home page I get to yes, right sir. here? Uh, how do I begin the process? Do I already have my resume and I upload it? Do I create it online? How does this work? Uh, we give you the tools to create it online. Um, you can go through, we call it a resume wizard, where you can simply cut and paste information. The fields uh -huh. will directly HTML your resume, look, make it look great, make it easy for the employers to find it. All right, let's process. show us some of the process here. So, so I begin, do you give me advice beyond just getting up the resume? I mean, you sort of hold my hand in the, in the job finding process in yes, general? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. In fact, the best way to start is right here at the top. You'll see we have a little button here to post your resume. Now, you can, again, cut and paste your resume. You can fill out our fields. Um, if you go down to the bottom, you'll notice there are career tools. Mm -hmm. These tools will help you both in forming your resume and practicing for your interviews. All right, so how to look for benefits, how to ask the right questions. Exactly. Office humor. Office humor. Okay, interviewing tips, that's cool. Exactly, okay. exactly. Um, answering tough oh, questions. And advice on how to put together a Exactly, here's help with your resume. We even give assistance of when it's time for you to leave your current employer to move on, hmm. we'll give you the help there too. All right, now let's, you mentioned the privacy bit. I want to ask you about that. If I go out there looking for a job and I currently have one, uh, obviously I don't want my current employer to know I'm out there in the job market, and I'm worried that they're going to go online and see that he's out there looking for a job. How, can I prevent that? Yes, absolutely. That's one of the biggest fears out there from job seekers, especially the, especially the passive applicant who wants to actually find the new position but doesn't want to be caught by right, their employer. Right. So what do you um, do? We have a system where you can actually block your resume from specific companies. If you go through, you'll see you can come down and actually type in the company name that you want to block. So let's say I work for Intel. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and type Intel in there. And I'm going to return all the companies that use hot jobs that have the word Intel in the resume, in the job description. Central Intelligence Agency, exactly. that's a good one. If it's good enough for the CIA, <laughs> we go ahead, we click Intel. Okay. And we'll come down, and we'll use the hot block feature. And now, effectively, any recruiter, hiring manager from Intel will not be able to see my resume, yet I can still be found by other so employers. So if I'm the Intel HR person, and I'm going out there looking for people, that person won't be able to find the resume. Even if I meet the description that that yeah. recruiter is looking for. All right, now you mentioned something else. I can actually make my resume like my own URL, a little website for myself? Absolutely, absolutely. That's one of my favorite features is that you can actually have your own website. You notice it comes down and says, make your resume a public URL uh -huh. on the web. We will host that for you. There's no fee. And if you just click that simple button, you come back down, you'll notice that there it is. There's your new website address. Okay. To give you an idea, we click on that. And huh. sure enough, here's your nicely formatted resume. There's Scott Clark. All right. Okay. We got a job for you, Scott. All right. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about a couple other things. Finding the right job. Now, you mentioned uh, one of the features is how good the search capabilities are, the different job sites. 
Uh, that's key, obviously. There's, I don't know, how many hundreds of thousands of jobs you have out there. I want to find the couple that are right for me. How do I begin that process? Um, I believe the best feature and one that our job seekers really, really like is what we call the search agent. And it allows them to actually set up the criteria, set up locations, things of that nature. And every time a job comes up on the site that meets those descriptions, you will get it via email directly in oh, your okay. inbox. Okay, so it's, not, it's, it's proactive. It's not just my looking for a job. I mean, say, if a job like this happens, tell me that an employer exactly. has posted that. Exactly, exactly. So what are we, what are we doing right here? How well, does here, this work? We've got a little sample set up. Um, if you go ahead, if you're looking to find a new programming position, you can name your agent to remind yourself of what this agent is for. You type in some keywords, skill sets, in this case Java Unix and C++. I'd like to work for an internet or new media company. And I mentioned choice before. Here you can choose whether you want to see jobs just from employers, perhaps from some search firms to help you find a new position. Okay. You go ahead and choose the location, submit. And now again, whenever a new job comes on Hot Jobs that meets those descriptions, you will be emailed and they will tell you. Let me ask you another question. If I go on and, and, and see the jobs available listings here, how do I know th these are real jobs from real employers? Um, again, very good question. We look at the choice. We will actually show you and ask you right off the bat, would you like to see positions from the principal organization doing the hiring? Uh -huh. Would you like to see a position that a staffing firm wants to help okay, you get? Okay, so you do sort those differently. Correct. So I can see it's some middle guy who's just looking for to hustle business Correct. versus the employer. Correct. And even if you're unsure, when the jobs do come delivered to you, we actually do differentiate them as well. Yeah. The employer's jobs are highlighted okay. in blue. Yellow Last question, does it cost me money to use the service? No, sir. Okay, just sort of go on there and do it? Yes. How do you make your money? From the employers. Okay, sounds good. All right, one of the big job trends over the last few years, in fact, has been the move away from full-time staff jobs to freelance jobs. So if what you're looking for is an independent contractor gig, well, you can find that on the web. Also, helping us figure out how to do that is John Slavitt, co-founder of Guru.com. Hi, John. Hello. Thanks for having me. Oh, sure. Now, this is a different scene right now. Same idea, but, but slightly different. So let's go to your website here. Sure. Uh, and I guess the first thing, uh, instead of a resume, I want to tell people what my expertise is, right? Correct. How do I do that? Well, it's pretty simple. And uh, I'm going to click into the independent professional track of our site. Okay. And uh, I'm actually going to go over and show you what a um, completed profile looks like. I've actually bookmarked a couple of my favorite gurus. I actually have to log in to, to use this feature. Okay, so, so this could be, a, a, if, if you were one of these freelance guys or an independent contractor, this is your description Correct. up on Guru. Exactly, this is, this is my professional profile. Okay. So this is a lady named Stacy, and uh, she's a, um, an executive coach who works in California. Right, again, so if I'm looking for somebody who's an executive coach, this is what I would find when I go out to the site. Correct. So she's created a profile. It, it, it takes really between a few minutes and about half okay. an hour. We encourage people to give us as much information sure. as possible, skills, experience, et cetera. So that's, that's where you start okay. with a profile. And uh, of course, the, the, the major reason that professionals come to our site is to find projects. Right. Yeah, that's the next one. So I yep. post my profile, kind of like my resume. Now I want to know who's looking for people with my skills exactly. on a contract job basis. Exactly. There are really two ways you can find a project. The first is that companies can come to the site and actually look for you. So this is my personal guru page. And there's actually an employer who sent me a project invite called Strategic Planner. That's the name of the project. Mm -hmm. So I can click in there and check out the project. As you can see, it's a $25,000 project. It's in San Francisco. It looks kind of cool. If I want to apply for that project, I click Accept Invitation mm -hmm. and then go through the process of actually pitching the gig, proposing a rate. So that's the first way I can find projects. The other way is I can actually search the Guru Marketplace for projects that may fit my skills. All right, so they may find me. I Correct. go look for them, and that's what we you do You don't now. have to be passive. You can be proactive. Okay. So I'm going to type in Java. Let's say I have Java I'm skills. I'm a Java programmer here. And uh, OK, I've returned 36 projects that fit Java. But I'm, let's say I work out of New York. and right, I wanna, So I only want jobs in New I, York. Yeah, right? I want to filter by New York. I'm a little overwhelmed by, by 36 projects. So I've got nine matches in New York. I can scroll down. Uh, Project Java, let's check that one out. And uh, it's 100 bucks an hour, mm -hmm. 40 hours a week for 32 weeks. That looks kind of cool. I can submit a proposal and go through the same process of actually trying to apply for that gig and win it. So there are two ways you can find projects, passive and active. All right, now the life of a freelancer is a little bit more complicated than the life of an employee. You've got to deal with your own insurance issues and all these other kinds of sort of service things that an employee doesn't worry about. Do you give a freelancer help at all in that way? Absolutely. A key part of our site is offering expert information and key services. So I'll show you some of that okay. stuff. 
On the header here, we have a section called Articles and Advice. We've actually put together a core of guru advisors who are absolute experts in their field. So these so are guru gurus. These are, these are the guru, <laughs> yeah, this is the guru, the guru's guru okay. list. One of them is named Dan Pink. He's actually one of the chief uh, contributing editors at Fast Company has been an okay. independent professional. This is sort of an easy in for freelancers. It's right? an easy in for freelancers. Okay. It's part of our site. We have information on getting started, legal advice, tax and financial advice, mm. the technology and gear you need to be an independent professional, plus all of the sort of how do I do those kinds of things best. An example uh -huh. would be um, making a great presentation. We have a, we have a, a guru here named Robert. Professor who, Podium. Professor, <laughs> po professor Podium. Okay. So it's all the info you need to do your business the best okay. you can. Now, how about that services part? I mean, you, you know, you've got to bill people. You've got to figure out how to collect money, all those kinds of issues. Absolutely. What can I learn about that on Guru? Well, once you get that project, whether it's from Guru or any other source, mm -hmm. we actually let you manage the project with a tool on our site called Time and Billing. So I've come here to the Time and Billing homepage. Mm -hmm. I can manage the time, the expenses, send in an invoice, and we actually help you collect. Because one of the biggest problems that independent professionals have is getting, getting paid. paid. Right. Exactly, collecting on the invoice. So uh, and how, how, what do you do there? I mean, what kind of advice or service do you offer there? On the collections? Yeah. We actually have a partnership with National Collection Systems. Oh, really? You submit your invoice to them, and, and they'll collect for you. Oh, OK. Uh, Anything else you want to show us on one, here? One last thing. We have a section called Guru Services. One of the other big problems that independent professionals have is getting insurance. We actually have right. a partnership to sell insurance in most states right. across so if America. if I want to get health insurance, I can actually figure that out here Absolutely. Too? It's actually health insurance uh, in addition to dental, liability professional insurance. liability. That's huh. a big issue for independent sure. people. Okay, and uh, now again, does this service cost me money as the professional? Do I pay a fee to you? No. The, the employer pays 5% huh. On the, on the size of the project if we successfully match them to a contractor. So okay. the company pays to the guru, it's free. So if I'm looking for the freelancer, I've got to give you 5% of what, what the if job is. If you find someone, but only on works. a success sure, basis sure, if it works. Sure. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, well, coming up next, we're going to show you how potential employers are using the web to recruit you for their company. Don't go away, there's more to come. Most job applicants on the web only see the process from the employee's side. How are employers using the web to fill job vacancies? Here to give us the inside story from the HR department is Shanil Kadarali, director of e-recruiting for Cisco. Hi, Shanil. Hi, Stuart. First of all, this is your job to find people online to fill jobs, Correct. right? Correct. Uh, and you've put together some pretty impressive numbers here. Just go through what the dimension of this whole internet hiring business is about. Sure. Well, at Cisco, 81% of all our hires come off the internet. 81%? 81%. Uh -huh. And basically, we know from our research that about 150 million people are on the internet, and about close to 30 to 40 million resumes are out there. 30 to 40 million resumes are yeah. online right now. And basically, <laughs> about six to eight or so are going to be in these career sites, as noted. Uh -huh. um, five to seven, give or take, are in virtual communities. And then there's about 10, 15 in um, ISP servers. And then there's yeah. a whole set scattered around in different online okay. directories. All right, let's go to your that. website where sure. you actually do your work. And I guess the first point is, if you're looking for a job, it's nice to have the hot jobs and the monsters and all that. But you might want to go to the Cisco site. You guys have how many thousands of jobs open now? We have about close to 4,000 jobs oh, open. OK. So if I wanted to find out about what Cisco has, is your site sort of just like the, the hot jobs we saw before? Exactly. I mean, the first thing we do is encourage everyone is to visit our site. OK. Um, if you really want to work for Cisco, this is the place to come. Um, right there, right there on our homepage, Cisco.com, you can just go to Hot Jobs at Cisco. And right there, we've got a couple of different ways, like for example, how to apply. First, of course, you're going to do your job search, find out the specific job that mm -hmm. you're looking for. If you're a network engineer or systems engineer in sales, finance, uh, management, whichever You've got area. basically the same tools yeah. that you would see on an on, on open job site rather than Ex just your company's one. Exactly. And here are a couple of different ways how to apply. There's Profiler. There's, of course, email, fax. Let me here just take it quickly to Profiler. And what a candidate can do is create a profile. And right there, it just says create a profile. Right. And, and just basically post your resume to the Cisco yeah. site. Enter What's in that little data? button on the right there? Oh, it says, oh, no, my boss is coming. So oh, just in case work. you're doing this at work, you click on that in seven <laughs> habits of a How successful employee. Why I love my boss. Yeah. Right. All right, uh, so we go on your site. Uh, how about beyond your site? I mean, obviously, you're going to look at the Cisco site and who's applied. What do you do as a recruiter to go find people? 
Well, we do a couple of things. Obviously, we use Monster and Hot Jobs, mm -hmm. um, but we also use a variety of different, different internet recruiting techniques. Like One of them is very similar, just going out on the web, using some of the search engines to identify... Just go to a search engine. Yeah. Like, show us how you would do that. Click, sure, right you there. you wouldn't think of that. And just quickly go to Alta Vista. Uh -huh. It has about a good 300 million pages indexed out there on the web. Hmm. So if I'm looking for a candidate, I'm just going to type in, for example, resume and let's say systems engineer. because That's a kind of a okay. hard position for us to find. And of course, I'm going to use these what are referred to as Boolean operator right, right. and sure, uppercase sure. and uh, quotation marks. And let's say routers. And then I'm going to click on search quickly. So that's, that's, uh, you would just search the whole web looking yeah. for people who would have these keywords. Exactly. And then if I just go down this particular example, there's a couple of couple resumes, a couple of job ads. Right. If I want to kind of hone in and do a better search, right there where it says resume, I'm just going to type in title colon resume. And I'm going to use all these different, yeah, I'm going to yeah, use just yeah. very simple internet recruiting techniques um, to go and find specifically candidates. Sure. So this idea that, that Scott mentioned earlier of making your resume a web page is a darn good idea. Then. Oh, it's a great idea. If, you're, if you go out to a virtual community like uh, GeoCities or Lycos, create your own page. Because one of yeah. our recruiters is yeah. going to find you. And if sure. you want to be found, I mean, your, your information is definitely available out to us. Now, would you go out to a Hotjobs or a Monster.com yes. to find people too? Yes, Just show would. us what that looks like from the recruiter side. Sure. I'll just go, for example, to Monster. Mm -hmm. And for us, we go where it says for employers. So I'll click on that. And then um, right there, for example, quick search. Mm -hmm. So again, you're going to do a kind of keyword search. Keyword search. So again, that thing the guy from Hot Jobs talked about is make sure you have the right keywords, keywords. in your resume because yeah. they got to match what you guys are yeah. looking for. And, and, and more specifically, talk about what you're doing and your accomplishments on your resume because that's what the e-cruiters are looking for. Yeah. Okay? Now, there's another site a lot of people aren't familiar with, but you e-cruiters are, and that's this AIRS site. So show oh, that yeah. to us and tell us what that does. Well, AIRSdirectory.com, they are basically, an, they're an internet recruiting portal. They're a portal for e-cruiters. Huh. So, so if we're looking for candidates, we're going to go to this site, and it has a listing of a whole bunch of different career sites for us. So this will get you to the monster, to the hot jobs, to the all But it'll also get us to the niche site. So if you're a finance analyst, and you want a job in finance for, with a technology company, oh. this is a great place to come to. If you're, if you're an engineer, software engineer, this is also mm. a great place so to come to. So this is a good site for the employee looking for a job also, not just exactly. the recruiters like you. Exactly. So just run us through here. What do we find on Ayers? I'm just going to go to the search tool here. It's called Search Station. And I just put in um, my username and password. Mm -hmm. And just to give you a quick idea what an e cooter can do, is right there, there's a whole section here on the left, resume search, resume banks. I'll just go to resume banks quickly because yeah. that's a, what we're talking about. And right here, all I have to do is put in keywords, but it's going to search all right. these passwords. So this is like a shopping agent, right? Only it's a job agent a to go out agent. on all the websites and find the people that meet your criteria. Exactly, for e -cruders. Great. Very cool. Thank you, Chanel. Thank you. Well, you might not think of this as looking for a job, but each year hundreds of thousands of high school seniors who are athletes go in search of the right college that will essentially hire them as a football player or basketball player. And there are actually websites that specialize in that kind of job placement. One of them is leveledge.com. And here to tell us about it is their CEO, Lisa Henderson. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Stuart. So let's talk about this. This is sort of, I mean, you treat this like a, like a job recruitment site in a way, right? Yeah, to some degree we do. And actually, the first step is putting together that very critical resume. And in our case, right, it so happens I'm, to be... Sports resume. All right, I, and I'm a high school guy who plays baseball. Yes. And so I want to get hooked up with the right college, the right school, the right coach, and hopefully the right scholarship. How do I do that? Well, you're going to visit the Level Edge Athlete Center, and what you're going to do is create what we call a My Edge profile. And a My Edge profile captures... Like my resume. Like your resume, only it captures all of your athletic performance metrics, the position you play and your batting average, et cetera, as well as your academic information. Hmm. So would I create this on my own? Do you guys do it for me? How does that work? Yeah, we actually have a simple form that you go okay. in, fill out, and it creates the uh, profile for you. All right, so basically I've posted my resume online now as this baseball player. Now what happens, now what, what else can I do? You have other things on there I notice, like uh, 
you know, camp directors, what, what does that mean? Yeah, we have other services. So like a job site that may point you as a programmer to take an additional HTML class, uh -huh. we're going to help you find those skill camps that improve your batting average. And you know, you're, you're a baseball player, okay. Stuart. So an example would be Frozen Ropes Baseball Academy, where you would come into our site, we would point you to that. You can register for the particular baseball camp or soccer camp and improve your resume. All right, so just like I might want to go take a class that helps me get a better SAT score, you're going to lead me to places that would help me improve my performance as an athlete to better qualify. Yes. Okay. Uh, what else can we do here now? Suppose, let's talk about the recruiter's point of view. Let's say I'm an athletic director or a coach or something. How do I now go to your site to find the, the people I'm looking for? Well, it works just like any other job site where that recruiter would have a specific uh, login and password uh -huh. that would allow them to access our database of athletes. So we're going to log in. I'm going to log in as a football coach, actually. All right. So you're looking for football players, high school football. Looking players for right football now. players. Once I get into the recruiting center, then I can search on any number of criteria for a particular yeah. athlete. So in this case, um, we're going to look for a high school senior, and let's just pick a GPA. And I could pick, you know, number of touchdowns, All number right, of minimum yards. Minimum SAT score, the athletic, I, again, and the, and the athletic and the academic minimum requirements. Absolutely. So um, we're going to go in and search a level edge database, and I'll identify those athletes that meet my criteria. Right, so, so here's a list of... These are all the football players that are in the database that you can figure out who might work in my school. Absolutely. So I'm specifically looking for a running back. Okay. So I'm going to click on this particular profile and get all the information about this athlete. Hmm. Okay, and then the next step would be if I want to say, oh, I'd like to talk to Brandon, then I just send him an email or... or yeah, our system allows you to contact the athlete via email. All right. It's a sort of matchmaking site in that sense here. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the key for us is though that we tie our communications so that they meet NC2A requirements as well. All right, so you're in a kind of special situation here. You've got rules from the NCAA limiting how a college and an athlete can talk and so yeah. on, right? Unlike, unfortunately, <laughs> unlike a job recruiter, we can't just contact any particular athlete. We have to meet specific guidelines in that context. All right, now let me ask what the coach center is. What do you do there? You explained the camp director. Is that the same thing? The coaches center is where a high school tournament or a junior college coach would actually manage their team. Uh -huh. And what that means is that they are providing us uh, statistics, performance statistics on particular athletes, um, and it could be in this case, it's a basketball tournament. So all of these teams used our system to manage their athletes during this particular tournament. Okay. So you so can this see, might be a high school coach or somebody who's managing a tournament involving high school athletes. Absolutely, and what we provide for the high school coach is a vehicle for not only managing their team but analyzing their team's performance. Hmm. So that becomes a critical component to the coaches as well. All right, so in other words, if I'm a college coach, I may go to this high school tournament to scout the kids and see how well they're doing, and this would actually give me the data to support my observations? Absolutely. So the data that's coming in on a particular athlete's performance at a game or a tournament is coming from the coach, so it's validated um, through that input. And you can okay. see that I can now analyze everything about that particular and game and that particular how does a particular, particular individual do all this? Finally, you have something called the parent center. What would that be? The Parent Center is really designed to help parents manage their student athletes. As we mentioned earlier, there are lots of things that you need to know mm -hmm. when you are uh, working with the NC2A and working with colleges and universities around scholarships. So we have... So the sort of ins and outs of this recruitment process for it's parents. It's the ins and outs, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I see. and, of course, finally, I mean, your job seekers, if you will, happen to be minors here, right? They're kids under 18 generally, so you've got to be a little more delicate about privacy and protecting their information? That's correct. You saw in every instance that we went in to look at a particular athlete or a particular team that I had to have a login right, name right. and a password. Okay. That is to protect, um, ultimately protect the sure. athlete. Leveledger.com. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you. All right, that's our look at finding a job online. Don't go away. I'll be back in just a moment with my pick of the week, a terrific new game if your sport is auto racing. Don't go away. Now for my pick of the week. NASCAR racing has reached a new level of awareness lately, partly as a result of increased TV coverage on the Fox network and partly due to the publicity. 
surrounding the recent tragedy at the Daytona 500. Well, there are, miraculously enough, millions of NASCAR racing fans out there, and now there is a new software simulation that is really good. It is called NASCAR Racing 4 from Sierra and Papyrus, the masters of auto racing simulations. This new version of NASCAR Racing has lots of new enhancements and features, including a new 3D physics engine for more realistic racing action, a new 3D graphics engine that improves the realism of the cars, access to 21 different Winston Cup tracks, and cars from all four major NASCAR manufacturers, including the new Dodge Intrepid. It was a time when you could only get good racing car action in an arcade, maybe on a dedicated game console. But if you've got a Pentium 3 and 128 megs of RAM, this baby will rock. And of course, if you plug in a racing steering wheel and foot pedals, it makes these games so realistic you can get very wrapped up in the tension of the race. Ironically, one of the racers featured in the game is the late Dale Earnhardt Sr., and the game is endorsed by his son, Dale Earnhardt Jr. The game is called NASCAR Racing 4 from Sierra and Papyrus. It runs on all versions of Windows. It'll cost you about 49 bucks. That's it for this week's Chronicles. If you have any questions about anything you saw on this week's show, please check out our website at computerchronicles.org. And I hope we'll see you here again next week. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by pc to pc the online computer migration service from PC First, moving files, applications, and preferences from your old computer to your new one. Additional support is provided by Upside Events, presenting the Digital Lifestyle Revolution Conference, where people and technology intersect. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-888. 310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic. Next week on the Computer Chronicles, computer and internet security. We'll meet a guy who hacks for a living. He'll show us how easy it is to break into your computer. This is software called Freedom, designed to protect your security and privacy when you're online. Anybody sent you a cute game or greeting card online lately? We'll show you why it could have a Trojan horse in it. And if you think it's cool to beam business cards from PDA to PDA, watch out. It's just another way to get infected with a nasty virus. Computer and Internet security, next week on the Computer Chronicles. <laughs>